different um, videos and so forth, brothers challenging this uh, sect or they're uh, breaking down the scripture on history, but there's really not too many videos where brothers are just giving the most high praise or going in depth about how to give the most high praise. So I thought it would be interesting with all the things going on and all the destruction verses we love to bring out at, in these times with North Korea and China doing the things that they're doing in the storms. We love to bring that stuff out, but the most high is still keeping his people safe. We have people uh, that we know of in Florida who dodged the storm. All they had was the lights go out, all praises, bless them people, the brothers and sisters. Uh, it's a family actually, they got about six kids and they dwell in, uh, they live in Florida, in Miami. They were able to uh, dodge the storm, all praises. But um, the Most High is the one who protected them. Like I told the sister, the Most High protected you. And so um, we thank the Most High for protecting those who he loved and even have a mercy on the Israelites who don't really know the Most High, but praise his name anyway without knowing how to keep his laws or his instructions. So they got afflicted, and I pray that that was enough to send them our way, but the Most High got to turn it up even more. He got to turn it up, because Israel is hard-headed. They're hard-headed. So we're gonna go into the class tonight, we're gonna praise the Most High, Let's go to Psalms, and we're going to say our prayer when we hit this one verse. Let's go to Psalms 150. And any of you who know Psalms know that the last five, cha uh, last, uh, five chapters of Psalms is all about giving him praise. If any of you brothers and sisters know about Psalms, that's what it's about. So we're going to read Psalms chapter 150, verse 1. Praise ye Yahweh. Praise Yahweh in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. to the most high. Our Father, who art in heaven, I be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, but forgive us of our debtors as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is kingdom, the power, the glory. We give you all praise to the Father in heaven. Abba Nawa Yahweh, Bahashim, Hamashiach Yahweh We give you all praise, our Father in heaven. And we ask that you continue to keep the breath in Israel. And show us your life, Most High. Show us your life and everlasting, everlasting favor. We give you all praise, our Lord. Bless our children, bless our families and friends. Help us to get through these turmoil and tribulation moments. We thank you for the things you have blessed us with. Bless the teachers, bless the elders of Israel. Bless all the brothers and sisters who are diligent in this truth. Bless those who go out in the streets and teach. Bless those who go into the reservations and in the churches and in the houses. Bless those who are on the buses and the cars and the trains teaching. We give you all praise, Abinawa. Thank you for all the things you've done for us. Abinawa, Yahweh, Bahashim, Hamashiach, Yahushai. Amen. All praises to the Father. So we're going to praise Him throughout this conference call. All praises to Him. And we're going to do it by going through the scripts. Hallelujah. 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 All praises to the Father. All right, so welcome to uh, Lion's Roar on the Shabbat. This is the beginning of the morning of the Shabbat. And we're going to go into the scriptures and eat a little bit. So let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh giving thanks to the Abba Nawa, the Father by Him. All praise to the Most High, Abba Nawa, Yahweh. All praises to Him. So everything we do is through Him, through the, through the Son to the Father. 
to give them praise. Let's go to Revelation 19 and 10. You guys have heard this verse before, but it's very critical for a lot of you who are praising Christ, and I have to show you this all the time. We, we give the most out thanks for sending our brother uh, Hamashiach, but we also have to understand who we praise. We praise the same entity that Yahweh praised, but who the world calls ignorantly Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 19, and let's read verse 10. Revelation 19 and 10. And I fell at the feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh. Worship the Most High, Yahweh. You hear that? He says, Worship the Most High, Yahweh. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So when we're talking, going through these scriptures, this is the spirit of prophecy, going through the scriptures. We're, we're pushing the Most High higher and higher and higher as he is the Most High of all. You understand? So Yahweh Shai, this whole book, what did Yahweh Shai say? Hebrews, Hebrews uh, 10 and 8, let's go there real quick. Hebrews chapter 10 and 8. Above when he said, sacrifice an offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin that wouldest not, neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O power. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. So who is that he's speaking of? Yahweh Shai. If you read the next verse, we are the body of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, who is the bride and the groom, who are going to be married off by the Father. Okay? The Father's going to bring us together. The bride always follows the groom. Okay? And when she follows the groom, she trusts in the groom. But who marries the bride and the groom? Who marries them off? It's the Father. You know, you have to go through the Most High. You have to go through Christ to get to the Father, to please the Father through Christ. All right. First Chronicles chapter 16 and 8. Give thanks unto the Most High. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Okay? So we're supposed to make known what? His deeds among the people. Everything, everybody we talk to, we should be bringing this truth. Make known the God of Israel. Most people acknowledge some kind of God. All must worship and know the Father of Israel, the creator of all things. If, you talk, if you're sitting down at a bench and you're talking to someone, they're always going to say, oh yeah, I love God. But what God are you talking about? You know, are you talking about the chicken God, the fish God? Are you talking about the God of Israel? So when you challenge people, and you say, uh, what God is that? A lot of times they get offended because they don't know where you're coming from or they think you just want to argue. But no, there's only one God. There's the God of Israel. So make it known. Don't say yeah or whatever they're saying. You know, praise the most high, the, po the power, the power of Israel. Let's go to 1 Kings 8.20. That's a very, that's a simple mistake that most people do. Very simple mistake to fall off. You know, uh, saying that one little thing with your words, it gets you all jacked up with the Father. That one little thing. So you have to be careful with that. Don't always agree with your adversaries when it comes to saying little statements like that. 1 Kings chapter 8 and 23. 1 Kings chapter 8 and 23. And he said, The most high thy power of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on the earth beneath, who keep his covenant and mercy with thy servants, that walk before thee with all their heart, who has kept with thy servant David, my father, that the promise that, that, that thou promised him, thou spokest or spakest also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand as it is this day. Your mouth can control a lot of things, man. You speaking bad about the Most High by mentioning other gods? Remember, that's the first commandment. 
Not to mention any other guys. That's why I said it's very critical that you don't jump on a bandwagon when somebody else mentioning their God. Or it's a beautiful day and they say, thank God. Or what God are you talking about? You're not going to get me in trouble by saying, I agree with you. And that's breaking the very first commandment. You see how quick that is? That could, that could get the most high heated, man. Just like that. That's why I said, if you're going to praise him, praise him all the way. Don't have step with the first commandment. That's a doozy. Verse 25. Therefore, now the most high of Israel, keep with thy servants David, my father, that thou promise him, saying, there shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. Now just think about if we're going to have a man sitting on a throne, the only thing that's going to occupy his mind is the father. All he's going to be thinking about all day long as a king is the Most High and what the Most High wants with his people. Think about that. He's not concerned about anything else on this planet. All he's concerned about is, is his people serving him, serving the Father. That's what Yahushua is doing right now. He's our king. All he's concerned about is, are you concerned about thinking and praising the Most High? That's it. Verse 26. And now, O power of Israel, let thy word be verified. You hear that? With thou spoke of unto thy servant David, my father. And notice he says, thy word, I pray thee, be verified. But will the Most High indeed dwell on the earth? Question. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of the heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built it? So the Most High is telling you, look, He's everywhere. He is everywhere. You can't contain him. So whatever you speak in, he's watching. He's watching. Let's go to Luke chapter 1 and 68. Let's go to Luke 1 and 68. Luke chapter 1. Verse 68, blessed be the most high of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. So it says what? Blessed be the most high of Israel. In other words, praise the most high of Israel. Okay? It's all about the most high loving his children Israel and vice versa, Israel loving the father first. Right? That's point in case. Point in case is Israel loving the father. So the God of Israel is everything. Go to Psalm 47 and 4. Precept upon precept, right? We're giving you precepts. So write these precepts down. Psalms 47, verse 4. Psalms 47 and 4. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. The most high beloved Israel. Okay, so he said he chose us to receive his inheritance from the beginning. All right, starting with Shem. He chose us. Let's go to Ephesians 1 and 4. Look at Ephesians. So we're going back and forth from the old to the new. And in the New Testament, the New Testament wasn't even around back then, okay? The New Testament wasn't put together until about 70 AD when we fled out of, out of Israel. That's when it started getting put together. Okay? And, and guess who was the first one, first, first book to show up out of this whole New Testament? It was the book of Mark. That was the first book to show up. The very first book. It was that gospel. Then the rest came. Right? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Ephesians 1 and 4. According as he have chosen us in him, before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So, who is the him and who is the it? Who is the him? The him is the most high. Who is the it? The it is Israel. Like you see the movie It, we're the it, we're the creature. The most high calls us his creature. There. 
So before the foundation was even created, he already had his creature made to do what? To serve him of all other nations. Verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Hamashiach Yahushai to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. So the Most High is the one to put us there. So this letter, many people read this today and think this is for everybody, but no, this is for the Hebrews who were scattered all over the place. That's what it was for. Why was it written in Greek and not Latin? Why was it in Greek first? Can I call Mr. Yahar? Um, was it because that was the ruling kingdom at that time, which came after the Medes and the Persians, and um, Antiochus had ordered everybody to be unified in, in customs and in language? Exactly, I the first message. Very good, I. So yeah, it was in Greek because of that order that was uh, consented by the king. And uh, when it was consented by the king to be in Greek, everything to be in Greek, guess what? Money was being made off this book that we got right in our hands. Those scrolls was being passed around and somebody was getting paid. All right? Somebody was getting paid because it was also written in Greek. Because nobody can speak Hebrew. It's just like when it went into Egypt and the, uh, the Israelites who were in Egypt under Ptolemy didn't know how to speak Hebrew there, they were speaking Egyptian. So somebody was getting paid. Someone was getting paid to write that stuff up. All right? You don't think our 70 elders got paid handsomely to translate this book into Egyptian text in the Septuagint? The same thing with the Greek. Did they sell out? Did they sell out of the Most High to, to write this stuff up? Not necessarily. The Most High had his hand on them to do what they did so that our brethren could get the truth. It's just like us here in America getting an English book or in Mexico or in South America getting a Spanish book. They may have sold out, but in the end, the Most High was all in all. Remember, this book was only for the bishops and the priests. No one else was supposed to have it, so a lot of people got killed writing this book. A lot of people got killed just translating it. Just translate, like the Vulgate, the Vulgate Bible, that was a person's name, the Vulgate. He got killed for writing it in English, okay? They, they, they killed him and said he blasphemed the whole place. They had killed the dude, and then while he was in the grave, they dug him back up and threw his body in flames. They killed him twice because he translated to the English. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, be thankful and give the most high praise for having this book delivered to us the way that it is, man. For us to just go through the book like this, it's a blessing. Big blessing for us to be able to go through the book like this. All right? Let's go to Psalms 105. Book of Psalms. Blood is all over this book. All over this book, Akio. Psalms 105, verse 12. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it, when they went from one nation to another, that's what we did, from one captivity to the next, from one kingdom to another people, right? We went into Egypt again. We went into this Egypt again. We went into uh, Spain. We went into Britain. We went from one kingdom to another. He suffered no man to do them wrong. We still exist today, still here. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. Like King James, they were trying to kill him. A lot of kings were reproved to get this word out to our people. Verse 15, saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. See that? So the Most High is gonna bless Jacob regardless of what happens. He's going to bless us. So yes, when you look at the scriptures, us going into captivity to captivity, that was a form of stupidity on our part. And yes, it was stupid because we, we didn't keep the laws. And so, I mean, when you look at um, 
uh, Isaiah chapter one, the Most High doesn't he call us? A, uh, he doesn't he call us an ass and an ox? Doesn't he say an ass and an ox is smarter than us? One of the dumbest animals on the planet. So yeah, we we're very stupid people to be going from one nation to another. The Most High followed us the whole way around. Everywhere we went, the Most High was following us. Blinders on our eyes, tape over our mouth, chains on our hands, yet the Most High was still there with us, still following us around, all present. So even other nations recognize the miracles of the Most High. Let's go to Psalms 102. We're a miracle just by people looking at us eye to eye. We're a miracle just to be here. We are the most, we are the bottom of the bottom people right now. The bottom of the bottom, man. The Negroes, Latinos, Americans, Indians, we get no respect, none. People try to forget our history purposely about our kings and our rulers. They purposely try to forget it, but yet they want to make money on it. They got museums regarding our ancient people. This is Psalms 102, verse 15. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Most High, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. They're going to fear us as well as fear the Most High. They don't understand that the Most High is building up Zion. That's what he's doing. So they're going to fear us. Let's go to Isaiah 25 and 3. Don't get it twisted. The Most High is going to bring fear on these other nations when they see us in our righteousness. Isaiah 25 and 3. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. So what are the cities of the terrible nations? Those terrible is the same thing as ruthless. These ruthless nations that we see in Africa or in China or in South America, some of these ruthless nations, man, that just kill people at will with no, re no, no, with no regards. Those ruthless nations are going to recognize who the Most High is dwelling with. And they're going to have mercy on us. We're going to have mercy. We ain't going to have mercy on them, though. They're going to seek our mercy. Let's go to Exodus 18 and 10. The book of Exodus, chapter 18, verse 10. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Most High, who have delivered you out of the land or hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who have delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. So even, even Jethro, Jethro was the father-in-law of Moses. Even his people, the Midians, who lived in Ethiopia, even they were afraid of the Most High. They feared the Most High. All the people recognized the God of Israel. So are you kidding me? You don't think the other nations heard about what happened to us? You don't think they heard about what happened to the Pharaoh? Man, people were in fear. Let's go to the book of, uh, the book of James. It's gonna be the same thing all over again. People are gonna be in fear when they see how we just escaped all these tribulations here and, and go back to Israel. They're going to see us marching. You, you think you know how to march now? You don't know how to march until the, you get in the Most High's army. Left, right, left. We are Israel. The mighty, mighty Israel. That's what we're going to be singing. Let's go to the book of James. Book of James chapter 5. The book of James, chapter 5, verse 13. James 5, verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any married? Let him sing psalms. So are we supposed to pray? Yes. Can we sing? Yes. Like I said, people want to know who we are. So we tell them, we are Israel, the mighty, mighty Israel. We're going to be singing, going into the land. We're going to be singing. 
it's going to be like thunder coming. All right? We're going to be singing. We're going to be praying. We got to pray. When we get afflicted, we got to pray. You got Muslims that pray diligently five times a day. We have to pray too. If they could do it, you could do it. They go through the whole motion. Like I was telling the brother Obadiah, I remember I was at a football uh, stadium and I saw a Muslim and his son walking in the stadium and the dude pulled out an old stinky little rug and threw it on the ground and started praying to the east in front of everybody like the heathen would. We ain't supposed to do that type of stuff. But the heathen, that's how bold he was. They will go through the motions to pray to their God. But we're afraid to pray to our God. You see? The Most High tells us to go in secret and pray anyways, but you scared to do that. You know? You gotta be bold about praying to our Father, man, and loving Him. Those who do not praise the Most High, the Almighty, okay, He's gonna laugh at you. You know? A lot of people believe that the Most High is actually asleep. When you talk to some of these heathens, they don't think the Most High is uh, even around. They think he in some other galaxy, looking at other planets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he, like he in some other universe or something. No, the Most High is right here. Go to Psalms 121. The Most High is concerned about what goes on on this planet. He's not somewhere looking at Mars or Jupiter. You know what I'm saying? This is Psalms 121, verse 4. Psalms 121, verse 4. Behold! He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. So the Most High ain't sleeping, nor is he slumbering. The Most High is watching us. Okay? The Most High is the keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The Most High is going to watch us to the end. Verse 5, verse 6. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Most High shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Most High shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So the Most High is occupied with Israel. Occupy Wall Street, the Most High is occupied with Israel. That's all, he, that's all the Most High care about is us. And we should be doing nothing but caring about the Most High. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32. That's how much love he got for his people. That's heavy, heavy, man. Deuteronomy 32, and let's go to verse 9. Deuteronomy 32 and 9. For the Most High's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. All right, so his portion is his people. There's no other portions out there. His portion is Israel. All right, so don't think it's a pie. Everything's split up the middle. No, that portion is like 100% of the pie. Remember he said that the rest of the nations are like spittle. They're like spit. So that portion is the whole pie. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in the desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. That means he don't care about nothing else. So Israel's everything to the Most High. The Most High, not in another, like I said, he's not in another galaxy. He's, he, he may be in another dimension, but he ain't, like I said, he ain't focused on Pluto. He ain't focused on Mars, right? All he's focused on is the servants that exalt his name. And yes, he knows who the servants are, believe it or not, you know? He knows who his servants are. Let's go to Malachi 3. Book of Malachi. Chapter 3. The book of Malachi. Chapter 3, verse 16. Then they that feared the Most High spoke often one to another. Ain't that what we do? And the Most High hearkened and heard it. He heard what? He heard us. He hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared the Most High and thought about 
thought upon his name. They don't say that constantly. It says just thought about his name, thought upon his name. All it takes is a thought process, just move it in that direction and the Most High hears it and he knows your thoughts. Just that quick. That's why be careful with your thoughts and be careful what you speak. Your thought process right away, the Most High picks up on it. It's an antenna. Picks up on it just like that. So the Most High is checking out all these Israelites and all their thoughts. He gets excited when, you, when, when your actions follow your thoughts. Don't you know that? When your actions follow the way you're thinking about him, he gets excited. Look at Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 52. Most I loves Israel. Isaiah 52 and 7. 52 and, yeah, 52 and 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bring of good tidings, that publish peace, that bring of good tidings of good, that publish salvation, that saith unto Zion, the God reigneth, the power reigneth. So, the Most High loves feet that run to do righteousness. Okay? He loves that, man. His, he loves that action. You know? Brothers don't even understand that verse. It's actions of righteousness. Okay? Think about, think about what Yahawashai did. Remember Yahawashai when he had all the disciples inside the room and he started washing their feet. Why was he washing their feet? Was, did he wash their feet because it was dirty? Because they just came out the mud? No, he washed their feet because they rushed to do the name of the, they rushed to do the work of the Most High. That's why he washed their feet. Now there's an ancient custom when you're in those lands that you're supposed to wash your feet before you go in the house. But no, in this particular instance, let's go, let's go to okay, let's go to the book of John. Let's go to the Gospel of John. Let me show you. Gospel of John, chapter 13. Gospel of John, chapter 13, and let's drop down to the 11th verse. Let's, let's go to the 12th verse. No, let's go to the 11th verse. 11 verse is good. Uh, <laughs> let's go to the ninth verse. Eighth verse. All right, I'm shooting from the hip. This is uh, Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse 8. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Yahweh shall answer him, If I wash you not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, The Most High, or, or power, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Yahweh shall saith to him, He that is washed needeth not, save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. So, by him washing the feet, he's just showing that these are feet of righteousness. These are the feet that are running to do the Most High's work. That's what it is. Verse 12, so after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he, sat, he said unto them, know ye what I have done to you. Ye call me master and Hamashiach, and ye say, well, for so I am, for so I am. If I then, your Hamashiach and master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. You see? So he's telling you, look, we're going to be, if we're going to wash each other's feet, you know what that means? That means brother got to treat brother the same way. We got to love one another. That's basically what he's saying. Love one another who's in this truth, man. You know? And help those who are not in this truth. All right. So they were puzzled on this. When, when this was being said by Yahweh, the disciples were puzzled. They should have known this parable. Uh, remember the eunuch in the book of Acts? Remember, um, it was the Ethiopian eunuch who was really an Israelite who was in captivity in Ethiopia. He was making his pilgrimage three times a year to Israel, right? So when you look at this, uh, go to the book of Acts chapter 8. Let's talk about them feet again. 
uh, the book of Acts, before Romans. Let's go to Acts chapter 8 and verse 30. Let's go to verse 27. Uh, this is Acts chapter 8 verse 27. And he arose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia. What did he do? What did, what did he do? What did Philip do? He arose and went. Where did he go? To do righteousness. It says a man of Ethiopia and eunuch of great authority under Candace queen of the Ethiopians. So he was under captivity under Candace the queen of the Ethiopians. Who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Now, who were the only people that came to Jerusalem to worship? The Israelites, just like in the book of Acts chapter 2. Nobody else came to worship in, in Israel except the Hebrew Israelites. So this Ethiopian eunuch was an Israelite, okay? Calling himself an Ethiopian because he lived there. Verse 28, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet, how come he didn't read that verse about Isaiah 52 and 7 that we just read? If he was reading Isaiah the prophet, he should have known how beautiful are the feet that run to do the business of the Most High. Uh, verse 29, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before the shear, so opened he not his mouth. Who is that talking about? Yahweh Don't you know in the Old Testament, Yahweh was a mystery to the people? They didn't know that he was even coming. It was already predestinated that he was supposed to come on the earth, say the things that he said, and go back and tell the Father. It was already predestinated. That's why a lot of the prophets didn't understand those verses about Yahweh in the Old Testament. Like in, the, uh, in Second Ezra, in the second chapter, when Yahweh was putting palms on all the prophets' heads or the servants' heads who had stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord, Ezra said, who is that tall young man standing amongst the rest of the servants. He, it was a mystery to him. He didn't know who that was. No, nope, he hadn't even came into the earth yet. So, I mean, Yahweh Shai was here, the Christ. Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So that's what this, this eunuch was stuck on. So the scriptures tell you, happy is he that runneth to do the work of the Most High. Why? Because we have a message to deliver. Sometimes y'all don't even know you're delivering a message. It just comes when y'all speaking. The Spirit get on you, right? The Spirit get on you and you start speaking and the Most High is blessing you. Prophecy is coming out of your mouth. Look at verse 33. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Who is taken from the earth? Yahweh shall. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom appear this prophet, the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Yahweh Okay? Jesus. So Philip was that deliverer. He was the one who was supposed to take this message to this Ethiopian eunuch to present the good news. The happy feet. All right, those are the feet that he's speaking of. Look at uh, verse 26. Let's jump up. Look at 26. And the angel of the Most High spoke unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is desert. So an angel got into Philip's mind and what? Started tweaking it. Don't you know them angels can go in your mind and tweak your thoughts? Like a little computer in there, man. They just go in there, doo -doo -doo -doo. they do all kinds of stuff in your brain. You don't know what they be doing, man. The angels, that's what they do. They control you and put messages in your mind. You know? You be wondering why people do some evil things. That's because they're not prayed up. That's why it's important to pray. Go to um, Job chapter 33. 
The book of Job, chapter 33 and verse 14. Book of Job 33 and 14. It reads, For the most I speak of once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed. Where was Philip at? Didn't it say an angel came and put a vision in his mind to go to the south, into the desert? Who do you think did that? That was the most I sent in his angels down. Tweak his mind. All up in there. Do, 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 do all kinds of stuff in his brain. So he put the message in him. Philip didn't know what he was doing when he left that morning. He was just going. He didn't know. It was the most I put that, that message on him. Right? So verse 16. Then he opened the ears of men and sealeth their instructions. See that? He put instructions in you. This is why it's important to pray. You must pray at night before you go to bed. You ask for a thank, a peaceful rest. You, first you give them thanks for letting you get through the day. Then you ask for peaceful rest and that you wake up healthy the next day. And his message will be sealed in you. Now if you just go to sleep and that's your routine to go, I mean, he'll have mercy on you if you miss a day or two. But if you just go to sleep and don't even think about praying on a daily basis, guess who get into your mind? Satan. You wake up doing Satan's business, you know? Like uh, on Boys in the Hood. Y'all remember that movie? But Ice Cube got up after his brother Ricky had got killed. He walked over to talk to Trey. They sitting on the porch and they just bugged out. Can't believe everybody dead around them and then they died the next week. Their instructions were sealed because they didn't believe in the Most High. All right? Verse 17. That he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. So the Most High seal of your instructions on it like a robot every day. He can seal his instructions in you. You don't even have to have a clue that the Most High is doing it most of the time. Let's go to Psalms chapter 92. That's why you got to give him praise. Psalms 92. This is serious business, man. I mean, we are spiritual bodies. Think about it. I mean, this, this is just a house that we're in. This, the body, this physical body, but we're mainly spirits, okay? We're spirits. When this spirit leaves this body, this body just caves in. It's like, man, what happened to the body? When you see people at the funeral and they dead, you be like, what? why they, they just look like zombies? What happened to them? Spirit is gone. And then when you get into the spirit, you still recognize other spirits based on the mold of this body. What am I speaking of? When you look at Luke chapter 16, the parable when the rich man, poor man, the rich man dies, the poor man dies. As soon as the rich man dies, guess who he sees? He sees the poor man in Abraham's bosom. How did he recognize him? How did he recognize him right off the back? The poor man still got the mold of his physical body. Abraham still has the mold of his physical body. Okay, just like Yahweh when he died and rose from the dead, he still had a spiritual body as well as a physical body, right? You can still see what he would look like. That's why people are going to be shocked when he come back on earth. Let's go to Psalms 92. Psalms 92, verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Most High, and to sing praise unto thy name, O Most High to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. See that? The loving kindness is thanking him. All right? Thanking him in the morning and the faithfulness every night that he got you through the day. That was, by faith, you got through the day. By faith, you got through the whole day. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. I, beautiful thing, I think. Y'all don't even know how, how blessed you are to get through the day. A lot of people don't make it through the day, man. Psalms 55. Psalms 55, verse 16. As for me, I will call upon the Most High, and the Most High shall save me. Evening and morning, and at noon will I pray, and cry aloud. And he shall hear my voice. How many times did he pray? Three times. Evening, morning, and night. 
The Muslims pray five times a day. Uh, is that our protocol, three times? You can pray as many times as you want. But this is King David showing you how many times he prayed. For, for a lot of people, that's too much. Even in the morning and nighttime. Not to mention, before you eat, you pray. After you eat, you're supposed to pray, right? When you leave your house, you're supposed to pray. When you come back, you're supposed to thank the Most High. Okay? Praise Him for everything. Praise Him for safety. Praise Him for blessings. Let's go to Romans 12. Book of Romans. Pray for your family. Pray for your children. Pray for those who are pregnant. Pray for those delivering babies. Pray for those on their deathbeds, man. In the name of Hashem HaMashiach, I was to the Father. You know? All praises. Hallelujah. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 12. Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. What is holy and what is acceptable? Holy is what? The law, following the laws. That's sanctifying yourself, separating yourself by following the laws. What is acceptable? What does, what does it mean to be acceptable? What does that mean? What does that mean to be acceptable? Anybody know what that means, to be acceptable? It's not a hard question. It's a very simple answer. I mean, you really can't go wrong. What does it mean to be acceptable to the Most High? Holy is one thing, but what is acceptable? Was not, <clears throat> was not Hamashiach acceptable? What did he do to be acceptable? Uh, Go ahead, Ak. Can I, um, yeah, I want to take the stab at it. Uh -huh. uh, long, it, 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 after seeing that it was um, the, the part of, uh, of being, let's see, let me get back to the scripture, was it, on, 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 on holy, being set apart, and going acceptable is, is, is sacrificing. Like, it, it's like putting off in all the things that you want. You sacrifice those things. Therefore, when you put off those things, you are now acceptable to the Most High. That's how I, I see it. No, that's a, good, that's a good answer. Anybody else want to take a stab at it? Anybody, can anybody give me a simpler answer? There's one word. It's one word. It's so obedience, obedience, obey. You gotta obey the Most High, you have to show obedience. Was not Hamashiach obedient? If he was obedient, we have to be obedient. Remember, Adam failed the obedience test. He failed it, he failed it miserably. And through Adam, every man fell to the sting of death up until the Most High sent, uh, sent us another Adam to conquer the sting of death. By what? By being obedient. Yahweh I was obedient. We have to be obedient. If we're obedient, then we can conquer all these things by enduring. We have to be obedient all the way through. Adam slacked off. But we have to not, we have to stay uh, like Revelation 14, 12. Be patient and keep the commandments. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, uh, yeah, 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. Good job, Bob. Um, 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Remember we read that in 2 Ezra chapter 3? He was a soul. Then the Most High put the breath in him. It says the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. A quickening spirit. See that? Howbeit that was not first, which is spiritual. Now, when it says the last Adam was made a quickening spirit, that means that he grew in stature. He kept growing. A quickening spirit means to grow quickly in understanding. Adam was slow to growing. He was slow to understanding obedience. Very slow-minded. Okay? He had the spirit. But he, he wasn't growing. You understand? There's a lot of brothers like that. 
They, they got the spirit to keep the commandments, but they don't grow. Yahushua grew. He grew to understand how to defeat the sting of death. Verse 46, how be it that was not first, which is spiritual, see? So Adam was not spiritual. But that which is natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. So because Adam came to the world as natural, we had to come to the world natural. But because Yahweh came to the world and defeated the natural by spiritual, that's what we're doing. Defeating the world by the spiritual things of what? Obedience. Keeping the law but being obedient. Understand? The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is of the most high from heaven. As is the earthy, such as they that are earthy. And as in the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. So you have many people that believe in God, like I said earlier. They are earthy people. They are not spiritual. To be spiritual, you have to keep the laws and remain obedient. And know what you're doing in the form of sacrificing and being circumspect throughout your day. Circumspect. Okay? You have to know what's going on. You just can't just be walking in a, in a cloud. You got to be wise. Okay? So let's go to Romans 5 and 17. Romans 5 and 17. The book of Romans, chapter 5 and 17. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Yahweh So the first one that reigned by one was Adam. The second one was Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. We have to reign what? In spiritualness and in righteousness. We have to understand the two. Let's go to Deuteronomy 11 and 1. Back to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 1. Therefore thou shalt love the Most High thy power and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. Always endure, always endure. Patience, always. Can't slip up. Adam slipped up. He slipped up. It's one thing falling off when you don't know you're falling off, but it's another thing to fall off when you're conscious. When you're conscious and you purposely fall off, that's why it says there's no repentance when you're conscious and you know you're doing it. There's no repentance for that. You already know that you're doing, you already know what you're doing is wrong, but you do it anyway. Why should the Most High say, oh, I forgive you, when you knew what you were doing? Remember, he knows your thought. As soon as you think about it, you're already there. You already know what you're thinking. You already know. Let's go to the Gospel of John. Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 9. Gospel of John chapter 15, verse 9. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. Now that's a tongue twister because many people see that and be like, what is that? So we follow, we, we have to follow the order or walk the order of Hamashiach to get to the most high, right? So He's already in the love of the Father because he kept the law, statutes, commandments. For us to be like him, we have to be obedient just like him to follow that same line to get to the Father. You can't deviate. You got to be right on that same wavelength. John 15 and 4. Well, John 15 and 14 is dropped down. 15 and 14. Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you, see that? Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Isn't that what the Father's doing to us? 
And Yahweh Shai, he's, he's making known all these things, making it plain for us Israelites to follow the Father. So he's saying, look, if y'all doing what's right, I'm not going to call you servants no more. Y'all friends of me. You guys are my friends. Like, Abraham was the Most High's friend because he was obeying the Father. He became his friend. To be a friend, think about it. To be a friend, that's how you have to be. You guys have to be on the same wavelength to be, to be a friend. Right? So just think, if we all are on that same wavelength, then we all are friends. We are all brethren and sisters. But we have to give him praise to show us that. 2 Corinthians, let's go there. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. 2 Corinthians. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of the Most High, and bringeth it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Everything that we have in this truth is going to be challenged. So you have to be stronger than all those mental people that come up against you. Your obedience got to be so strong that nothing can, nothing can penetrate your bubble or your circle around you. Because every person you run into, if they're not in the will of the Father, they are doing the devil's work. They have a different agenda. They have a different opinion than what you're bringing. So you got to, it's like Ezekiel. Wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path, I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them, and they shall dwell in their own land. 